about mixing a streamer with vintage equipment, yeah? Now, I'll tell you the origin of this one very quickly. I went and bought this streamer a few days ago, 500 quid. It's quite good, I'll review it sometime soon. When I was there in this shop, and I was just, I was just looking at the price of things, and I was thinking to myself, someone coming in, buying a streamer, an amp and speakers, could be so expensive. Now, the thing is, if you've got a streamer, you've, that is one item that you can pretty much rely on. So that's one thing that's set, it's not gonna be problematic, and it doesn't have any funny sound characteristics. It's not bright or this or that, you know, it's gonna be okay like that. So they only leave us with two things to spend your money on. And if you were to say just buy a vintage pair of speakers, you know, you could be saving an awful lot of money. You know, you might you might land up with an, you know, a thousand pounds in your pocket if you like that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? You can save a lot of money. So this is what was struck me to make this video, to be honest. I just thought like, oh God, you could walk in here and spend five grand and it would probably sound quite good. Probably. But my God, you know, I know I can make a, get a nice amp and speakers for like six hundred pounds if the right one. You know, you have to know what you're doing to pick the right ones. But if you're only picking speakers, you're only picking an amp. You can't, you know, and you you're not going to go that far wrong, yeah. And you won't be making huge financial investments, you know, if you're only spending a couple of hundred quid, a couple of hundred dollars on each one. It could be a really good thing. So anyway, let me let me just actually quickly say something about the market of vintage equipment, yeah, because something funny is going on in this world of vintage stereo, where people seem to think that if it's really old and really rare, then it's really good. And they'll call that vintage, you know. Well, you know, this isn't true. As most speakers in the 60s say, most, they just weren't very good. They hadn't really got that good, most of them. And if it's rare, then it, what's that? You know, it means that uh, no one really wanted it or something. So it's not the world of Tutankhamun, right? It's not the world of Rembrandt or uh, Rococo furniture, yeah? You don't want, if it's really old and really rare, it might be a load of rubbish and no one wants it. Generally speaking, stereo, vintage stereo, you might say starts in the early 70s and upwards, yeah. So I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, um, let's just, okay, let's talk about what you do if you've got a vintage amp and, vin and old new speakers, sorry, vintage amp new speakers. What are the advantages of that? Well, one advantage for sure, yeah, if we look at this, which is, you know, a super desirable bit of vintage kit. This is probably around £300, $400, something like that. It First thing is, it's gorgeous, yes? It looks great. Most £500 amplifiers, they don't look at my, much, you know. They have to do this minimalist look, which is the only, which is because it's cheap, really, do you know what I mean? So... First thing is, it might look absolutely great. And this all lights up if I could be bothered to pick, put the right bulbs into it. Uh, so th that's one advantage. Now, of course, a lot of vintage stuff sounds good. There are some ones that don't sound so good. So you've got to be careful here. I mean, you look on my channel, I'll pretty much tell you what sounds good. Uh, but mostly you're going to get looks. And you're going to save, again, you're going to save a good bit of money. And let's look at that there. That's an Arcam Alpha 8. That is an earlier thing, yeah? That's like mid-90s, yeah? This Marantz is 1978, I think. See, that Marantz is, is maybe more liable. It is more liable to have things wrong with it. Or, you know, it's nearer the end of its natural life before it needs to have some work done. This Arcam you know it's probably going to be fine for a good while and this arcam you can get for about 120 150 pounds 50 watts and it's got a nice phono stage in it yeah 
all old amps have nice phono state, certainly from the 70s. Getting into the late 80s, they started to lose them because CD came out. This arc amp has a phono. This has a. This is uh, 38 watts a channel, by the way. Uh, but you know, 120 pounds. It's a nice bit of kit. I don't actually love the sound of this myself because I'm a super fusspot. But uh, it is a good bit of kit. You know, with a phono stage, modern equivalent, maybe five, six hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, something like that. This, and when I say the sell for, sells for around three hundred pounds. If you go on eBay and you're looking to buy things, watch out for these buy it now things, yeah? Most of those buy it now prices are just hopeful things and people put them on for $795 and they sit there for a year and nobody buys them or most times no one buys them. So you want to do the, you want to be in an auction if you're going to get anywhere near a, a, a good deal. Most buy it now prices are just you know, just pie in the sky, you know, just hopeful things, most of them. They don't care if they sell them or not, you know. Okay, so let's now, the better idea, the even better idea, I would say, is modern amp, you know, because you might already have one, and vintage speakers. Now, why is that? First thing is, you can get big speakers, yeah? I mean... It struck me when I was in this uh, hi-fi shop the other day how much money you have to spend to get scale, you know? Basically, big speakers will give you a bigger sound. It's, but, you know, put it put simply, it's almost impossible for little speakers to really give a big scale sound. And for big speakers, it's just kind of what they do. Do you know what I mean? Just how they do it. So let's have a look. Uh, so what am I saying? I'm saying, good idea, modern amp, vintage speakers. If they're big, you might have to travel to get them, yeah? It'll only be one journey, and that'll probably make it cheaper. You know, the more hard-to-get-at speakers are, the lower the price. If you're in a capital, middle of London, middle of New York, you'll get probably a better price for your big speakers still someone has to come and collect them uh, but if you're like you know a hundred miles from New York those speakers will almost certainly cost less you know same in England anywhere you know so that's where you can get bargains with big speakers let me just tell you what we've got here uh, Bowers and Wilkins DM4 got those 35 pounds about $180 Recently, really good, really good, you know, really enjoy them. All I did was tighten up those screws, yeah? I actually rotated it and then tightened up the screws. A lot of old speakers, the screws get loose, the bass driver isn't solidly held. It's really bad news. You've got to tighten them up. Yeah? Not like the Hulk, so you strip the thread, just tighten them up. You know, it's a win-win that. They don't want to be loose. Uh, I've been playing these with comparing to ELAC Debut 6.2, if you know those, which are recent speakers, they're 300 pounds new. I mean, these just win. These just beat them. They're more pleasurable. The, vo the vocals are better. It's more cohesive. You know, it's just a win. You know, just definitely better. Those uh, Monitor Audio MA4, uh, Mark II, they're probably late 70s, mid 70s, late 70s. You know, really, you know, quality bit of kit. Silk Dome Tweeter, nice box, got some bracing in it. Well engineered, you know, higher end of the range in those days. There's a really big magnet on there, you know, that's always good. Sounds great. Cost those cost me hardly anything like 50 pounds. I got one pair, I think 45, and I got another pair for 80. It was about four years ago. Uh, so you know, but oh, let me tell you when I bought these two pairs, the second pair, one of the tweeters didn't work, so I had to buy another pair of speakers on eBay, old original tweeters, and swap them over. So you know, that happens, that happens. 
but it's not that's not a hard thing to do you didn't even have to, i didn't even have to do any soldering yeah um and then yeah, i've got two pairs of speakers for like 200 pounds that are really like equivalent thousand pounds you would say you get a real big impressive sound out of those so uh they, you know, that's kind of, is that kind of it? Is that kind of it? Oh, you know, you, you don't have to have one or the other. You can have both vintage. But I'm thinking that there are people that are tentative or don't know, modern people, you know, and they've got a streamer, but they, they don't want to spend 2,000, you know, 1,000 pounds on an amp and 1,000 pounds on speakers. They could spend, buy one of those things and get a, a vintage pair of speakers for like 200 pounds and it could be an absolute result, yeah? I mean, it's got to be careful, but, it, you know, things are like, you know, some of those things are like five times less expensive than they would be new. Um, yeah, okay, that's it, that's it. So I think it's a really good idea. You've got problematic, non-problematic source, and then just try one of those things as a vintage, and you could save yourself some money and get some gorgeous looks, Yeah. And don't let that salesman sell you cables for two hundred pounds. Yeah, I went. I, I had to buy these things. This I couldn't even go in the shop because of the COVID, whatever it's of the the you know the the pandemic. Even then, he was going. Have you got Have you got cables though for this? Have you got cables? I, he wasn't allowed in the shop. He was still trying to sell me cables. <laughs>